Eta B. Dejerings, my Bible friends, book 3. Go wash in the river, barley loaves and fishes. Let's begin. Go wash in the river. Little maid was far, far from home. She worked for Captain and Lady Naaman. She washed dishes. She ran errands. Little maid did everything Captain and Lady Naaman asked her to do, except one thing. One thing little maid did not do. Captain and Lady Naaman prayed to an idol, an ugly stone idol. The idol couldn't see. It couldn't hear. When Captain and Lady Naaman asked Little Maid to pray with them to the idol, Little Maid said, Oh no, I cannot pray to an idol. I pray to the Lord God in heaven. He sees me. He hears me. One morning, when Little Maid took Lady Naaman her breakfast, Lady Naaman was crying. Why do you cry? asked Little Maid. Captain Naaman is sick. He has leprosy spots. The doctors cannot make him well. I know someone, little maid said, who can make Captain Amon well if he will go to the prophet at my home, far, far away. The prophet will know what to do to make him well. Lady Naaman told Captain Naaman what little maid said. I will go see the prophet, said Captain Naaman. I will take him presents. Captain Naaman rode in his best chariot. He drove his fastest horses. Men on horseback rode along behind the chariot. At the turn of the road, Captain Naaman waved goodbye to Lady Naaman. He waved goodbye to Little Mermaid too. The prophet saw Captain Naaman and his men coming down the road. He had heard about Captain Naaman's sickness. He sent a man to meet him and tell him what to do. Tell Captain Naaman, said the prophet, to go wash in the river Jordan seven times and he will be well.
captain Naaman said to his men, Does the prophet think I am dirty? Does he think I need a bath? I will not wash in that muddy river. Captain Naaman was angry. So, so, so very, very angry. Because the prophet told him to go wash in the river. I will go home, said Captain Naaman. Captain Naaman stared home. The men on horseback rode up close beside him. They said to him, If the prophet had asked you to do some big thing, wouldn't you have done it? Why don't you do this little thing? Why don't you go wash in the river? Captain Naaman drove slower. At last, he turned off the road and drove down toward the river. The river was muddy, but Captain Naaman waded out into it. He dipped down under the water. Then he looked at his hands and his arms. The leprosy spots were still there. Captain Naaman dipped under the water again, but the leprosy spots were still there. He dipped again, the spots were still there. His men on the river, in, on the river bank watched anxiously as he dipped again and again and again. But always the spots were there, and they were as large as ever. Captain Naaman dipped under the water the seventh and last time, and the spots... The spots were gone. Captain Naaman looked at his hands, looked at his legs, looked all over his body, but not a single spot could he find. The spots were all gone. He was well. His men clapped their hands and cheered. Captain Amman ran, splashing out of the river. He jumped into his chariot. He galloped his horses back to the prophet's house to tell him thank you. All of his men galloped along with him. Captain Naaman bowed low before the prophet and thanked him. He offered him the presents he had brought. But the prophet said, I cannot take the presents. I did not make you well. It was the Lord in heaven who made you well. Captain Naaman and his men hurried home. Lady Naaman and little maid were watching the road. Captain Naaman waved to them. He drove faster. When he came near, he shouted, I am well. I am well. And now, when Captain and Lady Naaman prayed, they didn't pray to the idol, 
that couldn't see and couldn't hear. They prayed to the Lord in heaven and little maid prayed with him. Thank you, Lord in heaven, prayed Captain Aman. Thank you for making me well, Lord. Barley loaves and fishes. Little lad lived by a lake, a deep blue lake, where at night his father went fishing. In the morning, little lad helped his father sort the fish he had caught. They put the big fish in one pile and the little fish in another pile. Big fish, little fish, big fish, little fish. Then little lad and his father went to breakfast. For breakfast, little lad had barley loaves. Little lad liked barley loaves. They were round and crusty and good. Barley loaves would make him grow strong, make him grow tall. Then he too could go fishing on the lake. One morning, little lad saw many, many people going by his home along the lake shore. They were going to find Jesus. May I go too? He asked his mother. Why, yes, you may go, of course. We'll make you a lunch. You will be hungry after that long walk. Into a basket, little lad's mother put five barley loaves and two small fishes. She gave the basket to little lad to take with him on his long walk beside the lake. Little lad waved goodbye to his mother. Barefooted, he walked through the thicky grass and the prickly weeds and over the sun-warm stones. Little lad was happy, happy to be walking along the lake shore on such a sunny morning. But most of all, he was happy because he was going to see Jesus. Little lad found Jesus on a grassy hillside, talking to many, many people. Jesus told such interesting stories, told about animals and birds and what it is like up in heaven. Little lad listened and listened. Sometimes he thought of eating his lunch but always be waited for just one more story. Little lad, do you have any lunch? asked a man named Andrew. Oh, yes sir, I have five barley loaves, two small fishes. 
Would you like to share your lunch with Jesus? Asked Andrew. Oh, yes, sir, of course. Would like, would love that, to share my lunch with Jesus. Little lad gave his lunch basket to Andrew. He watched Andrew take it to Jesus. He saw the pleased look on Jesus' face. And then he heard Jesus say to the people, Sit down on the grass, all of you. We shall now have lunch. Little lad's eyes opened wide. He thought, There is not enough lunch for all these people in my little lunch basket. He was about to go and tell Jesus that there were only five barley loaves and two small fishes in the basket. But Jesus was asking the blessing. Little lad bowed his head. Little lad saw Jesus reach into the basket and bring out barley loaves and fishes for his helpers to pass to the people. Little lad moved closer to see better. Andrew smiled and gave him a loaf and a fish. Then Jesus reached into the basket again and brought out more loaves and fishes. Again and again and again, Jesus put his hand into the basket and always there were loaves and fishes. How can it be, thought little lad. In my basket, there were only five loaves and two small fishes. But Jesus keeps taking out more and more and more. And then he knew <clears throat> it was Jesus. Blessing that made more, more barley loaves, more fishes. When everyone had eaten, Jesus said, Gather up the leftover food. His helpers went here and there with baskets, picking up all the small pieces. Little lad counted the baskets of leftovers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Twelve baskets! What a surprise! And all from his little lunch. Little lad hurried home to tell his father and his mother how Jesus had fed a big crowd of people from his basket of lunch and how when the people had eaten, there was more left over than he had to begin. Well, that concludes our reading of Eta B. Dejerings, my Bible friends, book three. 
go wash in the river and barley loaves and fishes. Thank you. And as always and forever, Jesus truly loves us all.